So once you start connecting the dots, you get to see the bigger picture. All you gotta do is connect them dots. See, in the water molecule, if you think about it, it's uh, connected to four other water molecules around it, to three others. It looks like that, ear to chin. So when it makes that covalent bond, it bonds to the other water molecules that are in the water. So what we're gonna do today, we're gonna shoot all the way down to the bottom of the rabbit hole. We're gonna go all the way to the bottom. You're gonna be looking out, it's gonna look like this. We're gonna go to the bottom of the rabbit hole because you don't wanna be at the bottom of the technocracy. That's what it looks like at the bottom. I mean, I know y'all are feeling it out there. I mean, it sucks to be at the bottom. But I'm gonna show you what's at the bottom of them rabbit holes. We'll go a little bit further. We're gonna talk about the microwave range of radiation today. See, most of you guys know what this is. So I was able to get all these parts out of the garbage, believe it or not. When you go to the bottom of the rabbit hole, you're gonna find something there. If you dig deep enough, when you go far enough down at the bottom, you're gonna find something. Water. It's at the bottom of every rabbit hole. So today we're gonna to talk about the electron. We're gonna talk a little bit about the diode. This is really important when it comes to HHO gas or doing electrolysis and you only have a sine wave. Let me show you how this works here, tell you a little bit about diodes. really important right here make sure you check this out this is how you do half wave rectification normally I have a full bridge rectifier for full wave rectifier okay but if you don't have that I'm going to show you how to use a single diode to get DC electrical power so normally I would have a, a full bridge rectifier like this hooked up but what I've done is just kind of like a flashback arrestor. Think about it. A diode is like a, a one-way valve. It only elect the electricity going one way. And it takes a little bit of voltage to overcome it. Kind of like a flash arrestor if you think about it. See, and here's the diode that I took out of the microwave. And I've hooked it up to the phase line right there. See, there's my AC line. I'm going to go ahead and plug that in in a second and I'll show you how that works. Let me show you, I can take an AC current and turn it directly into DC. Now I'm able to perform electrolysis without using a transformer, a full bridge rectifier. All I did was take the single diode for half wave rectification. And that's what it looks like right there. We're going to cover a lot in this video, more electronics, more science, more about HHO gas. It's very important to be able to do that, to be able to take a diode out of the garbage. So a lot of people have asked me, are we going to be sloshing around in a bunch of damn water if we switch over to hydrogen? Are we treating one environmental disaster for another? And the answer is no, you're not. Once the water it's turned into a fuel and it burns, it turns back into water again. See, it's a burn and reburn process. You combust and reburn again because you can capture it. Get back to nature using the right elements. That's the key here. So here's some uh, high voltage circuits right here that I'm going to be working on in the future.
just give you a look at some of those. Take a look in this folder here, some of the other stuff I'm working with. Talk a little bit about some of this. You know, so that's the key. What do these aliens want from us, you know? I mean, they came in peace. But the problem is they just keep coming, you know? There's so many of them now, they're trying to make the Earth look like their home. That's the only problem. So they wanted us to find the uh, advanced wet cell technology. It's obvious. I mean, to me, when I see these pictures, a lot of hydrogen technology, a lot of protons, a lot of electrons, a lot of symbols and stuff, you know, people working with hydrogen atoms and electrons. Let's go take a look in here at some more of these things about water. So every time I see this image, I always think they're using water as a shield because water is one of the few things that will protect you from radiation. Let me show you this right here. Underneath this water right here, I have a piece of uranium glass. It's from the 1940s. This thing is a really nice antique. And you can see the normal radiation around here is about 20 counts per minute. See, and I can't measure it through the water. See, the water's shielding it. So I'm going to take it out of there and show you what it would be like without the water there. Let me set this down. I'm trying to cover as much as I can about the electrical circuits in this diode before it ends up like Australia and it goes into full revolt. That don't look good. So let me take this out of here and I'll show you what it would be like normally. So water is a magnificent shield against radiation. Check this out. So behind the water it can't get to you. But when it's out in the open. This is what I was talking about, the microwave here. So the sheeple, they get nervous, you know, they get nervous. They don't want to end up in the microwave, you know. Let's see, let's put them in there. So they start to get nervous, you know. They don't know what's gonna happen to them. Whoa! So see that mask has a little antenna inside there. And you can tell it's affected in the microwave. So you're gonna burn the lips off a bunch of sheeple, but you ain't gonna make them radioactive. Just something to think about. You're looking at this chart here. These are the radioactive elements. See, they're much higher up on the chart. You go down a lot further, and there's the microwave radiation. So it's not ionizing. But you'll probably burn the lips off a bunch of sheeple with this thing. So you don't wanna put them in there. You definitely don't wanna jab them with a bunch of metal particles and shit and then put them in there microwave it's in the gigahertz and if you see the cordless cell phone right there and then the microwave oven is 2.45 gigahertz so you can crank it up you know X marks the spot you can crank up that radiation if you had a tower let's just say you want to crank it up to a lot higher and then you can reach O2 absorption at 60 gigahertz. And then again at 118.75 gigahertz. So I'm just pointing some of this stuff out, how the microwave radiation is lower on the chart. It's even lower than the visible spectrum. And then you have radioactive materials and stuff like that that's higher up on the scale there. Just kind of show you where that's at. You know, and power lines, like the power that comes in here, 60 hertz. That's over here. You'll see the power lines come all the way over 60 hertz. So to give you an idea of the energy that's coming in from the wall there at 120 volts. 
60 hertz that's its frequency so you come over here and look at this see there's no radiation coming out of the microwave here's my radiation detector there's my food it's in there smoking I'm heating up my vegetables seeing the water molecules they oscillate in there and jump around that's what heats up anything you put in the microwave So I'm going to keep going until my food's hot enough, you know, and the water molecules, they'll just keep oscillating. But you can see there's no radiation, no ionizing radiation coming out of the microwave. I mean, you wouldn't want to be inside there, but... First electron in the atomic nucleus. See, I always think of it like an egg, like a chicken egg. Think of it like this, like the chicken egg. You know, what came first, the chicken or the egg? See, there's the, the nucleus right there. See, that's the positively charged nucleus and all this yolk around it, that's the, that's the electron spinning around it there. So just think of it like that, you know, when I come in the kitchen, I like to cover some of the science. You know, we have the water molecule in all three states of matter right here. Look, I got a solid, a liquid, and a gas. So there's the gas part of it, okay? Sorry about that. And here's the solid, I got my ice and my liquid. You can see the electrons heating up the coil, the AC power is heating up that coil. Just like the microwave, you can heat the water and excite the molecules. The electromagnetic radiation coming off the coils, heating the pan. Now it's no different over here. The microwave is the same way, it operates just like that, heating the, the molecules by oscillating them. It's a little bit about direct current electricity. And it's important I want to show you this because you can cover you can sum all this up with the water analogy. When you're working with electricity, gas, and water, it's very similar to this. You can use the water analogy. So if you think about this, let me show you this. Some stuff we got going on here. Some of these images. You know, talking about the hydrogen atom, the proton, the nucleus, that's what's important because it has a positive electrical charge. It's not like the outer edge where it has a, an electron that's spinning around. It's positively charged and it has that negatively charged electron. Now some of these parts in here run off of AC, like this is an AC induction motor. You can't make power with this, no matter how much you spin that fan, it's not going to make make any electricity because it runs off of AC current. It's not like a DC current and almost everything in your house converts an AC into a DC square wave just to run anything. Almost everything. So when it comes down to the water analogy, I like to think of it like that. You know, this diode, that, that's the same thing as my bubbler standing here. This little piece of electrical equipment. See, the gas can only go one way. It's a one-way valve, one-way system. That's what the bubbler does. It prevents the gas from going backwards to my reactor over here. And even if it did, they're both built exactly the same. Just trying to sum that up and how important the diode really is. And if you look at the top of my reactor, the blast chamber here, this acts as a resistor. So see how resistors, diodes, transistors, all this stuff works just like the water analogy. When you're working with gas, electricity, and water. So I hope that helps shed some light on the uh, microwave and some of the parts that are inside that thing. A little bit about the radiation that it gives off on the electromagnetic radiation spectrum there. Very important piece of electrical equipment, the diode. Could save your life one day. It's a good way to get to your gas. A lot of parts in the microwave. We'll, we'll cover the motors here in another day. This is an AC motor. We'll cover the DC motor, the AC motor, the transformer, and the magnetron. We'll make some HHO wirelessly. We'll turn this thing into a power supply in the future. So it's very important. We're trying to, you know, keep these animals off the endangered species list because we'll be next. Man will be on here next.